Okay, so let's let's start. Um, I will share my screen um, so that we can have a brief overview of the V Protect and later do a short demo of uh, of the solution itself. So my name is Marcin Kubacki. I'm uh, architect at um, Storeware and I'm responsible for V Protect. So the solution that is able to back up um, multiple back, uh, virtual environments currently being uh, seen on the market. And um, after a short overview, I'm going to present a demo of what we have in our environment. Um, basically, just to give you an idea what vProtect is, vProtect was made to support, um, to protect um, open virtual platforms. Uh, we have started with Citrix and server, and later we have um, we have added functionalities for other uh, hypervisors, uh, such as Red Hat, Ovirt, standalone KVM. So if you have a bunch of servers running standalone KVM with just libvirt, it's also going to work. Um, Oracle VM, and recently with version 3.1, we have added Proxmox support. So we know that many and many customers are actually uh, having um, more than one virtualization platform in, in their companies, uh, especially that in, let's say, current situation, as you might see in the, on the market, well, obviously VMware and Microsoft um, are those mainstream hypervisors. However, we see growing, um, more and more customers are moving towards uh, Red Hat or Citrix um, based hypervisors. Um, so that is why we have focused with our solution mostly on those platforms. A brief overview of what vProtect, how, how vProtect actually looks like. Um, so you have your infrastructure with Ref Manager, with Oracle VM Manager, or a bunch of uh, servers running or Citrix, KVM, whatever. So basically, this is what you have on the left side of this picture. On the right side is actually the place where you want those backups to be stored. And vProtect obviously can use local storage, which actual well, local storage, actually any file system that you're able to mount on vProtect, uh, while also it's able to use um, Enterprise grade vendors such as IBM Spectrum Protect, Dell EMC Networker, Veritas Net Backup, or backup to the cloud or some object storage. In this scenario, S3, you have to also know that it's gain, gaining popularity among uh, multiple um, storage vendors. So they are able to expose their storage via S3 API, and we are also compatible with such, such vendors if only they are using S3 API so we can access. So the overall data flow is very simple. You have on the left side your virtual machines running on different hypervisors. We snapshot them, export data to, to the protect environment and later push data to the uh, particular backup provider or just to file system if you, if you would like. Uh, with version 3.1, we have added multi-node capability. What does it mean? So on the previous picture, you have seen just vProtect box. Uh, however, vProtect itself consists of two main components. So vProtect server and vProtect node. Uh, vProtect server is basically the centralized uh, administration panel so that you're able to um, actually uh, control all of the actions from via a single web interface uh, without having to, to go into separate, separate nodes, while the node itself is the data mover. So it is responsible to get data from the particular hypervisor and push data to the uh, backup provider of your choice. So the dirty job basically is being done by the, um, by the uh, node itself. In this picture, actually, you, you are able to see that there is there are some drives um, shown um, close to the vProtect node. Uh, well, in general, yes, vProtect node uses well staging 
that that is behind the scenes can be a local drive however uh, it doesn't have to be uh, in most cases uh, well it requires some local drives to be to be exposed as staging but we can also use externally mounted um, file systems of your choice especially that in some scenarios uh, like in ref environment this can be actually the same as your target for your backups so this is high level picture this is just to show you that you can have multiple nodes accessing different environments and this multi-node architecture actually enables you also to have uh, support for geographically dispersed environments so if you have uh, several data centers for instance and you want to protect uh, multiple ref managers or multiple hypervisors among those two or more data centers you're able to install nodes in those data centers separately may control them from the central point such as vprotect server itself and you can back up um, independently in all of those in all of those data centers to the backup provider which also can be accessible from multiple nodes so there is a huge flexibility as far as the um, as far as the configuration and setup of the storage setup of the um, accessibility to the backup providers is concerned um, a brief overview of the key features supported uh, for virtual environments so what you can actually do with the vprotect itself so first of all this is vm level backup and protection so you protect not only the data itself you are protecting also the configuration of the virtual machine this actually enables you um, to restore later the was well, let's say backup virtual machine in one place restore in the other place while having metadata of the vm also being backed up we also try always to use native api uh, so that it's not just backup itself it's also you, you should be able obviously restore such backup because it's supported by the vendors that you are backing up uh, let's say that, that they are providing the api itself to us so it's not that we are uh, designing our own way of um, um, fetching data from the hypervisors we are always using supported apis provided by the vendors themselves. Incremental backup support, well, it was in the past for Citrix and Server. However, uh, recently Citrix have just released Zen Server 7.3 with change block tracking support, which also we are uh, releasing in the version 3.2 of the vProtect. This enables you actually um, not only well to backup incrementally like it was in the past but those backups will be significantly smaller because those increments are not cumulative like it were in the past new apis uh, provided by the zen server actually enable us to fetch only the differences between increments themselves we have option to quiet to do quiet snapshots on citrix or freeze file systems like in the orbit or ref this is especially important if you have some um, applications that um, don't, well, they, they should be aware of, of the snapshot being done. In Citrix Quiet Snapshots, they use VSS behind the scenes. So if only you have a virtual machine configured uh, with the uh, tools provided by Citrix, then you are able actually to snapshot with this VM in quietest way. Otherwise, we just provide a regular crash consistent snapshot. Uh, with the new version, we protect 3.2, you are also able to exclude some disks uh, from, the, from the virtual machine. If you have some VM with, uh, let's say, huge drives that are just with temporary data, or you just don't want to protect those, you can exclude them from the backup, which obviously results in smaller backups also. Um, we support file level restore, so we are able to restore backups and later mount them on your nodes so that you are able to grab a single file from the backup themselves. 
And we support that currently for almost all of the platforms that, that we have in our portfolio, but with the exception for Proxbox currently. Uh, well, last key feature, but actually it's very important for the uh, bigger environments. Uh, if you are using tags or you just have a consistent naming convention for your VMs, you're able actually to automate the process of uh, assigning VMs. So vProtect scans periodically for inventory changes in your, in your infrastructure, but you're also able to automatically group those VMs, well, to assign to the groups, and this actually means assign schedules for those VMs automatically based on either their names or if you have side tricks or weird ref, you are also able to use tags. So VMs can be automatically assigned, removed from the groups, um, or if it's no longer existent, it can also be automatically removed from the group um, so that you don't have to worry about, let's say, having hundreds or thousands of VMs and thinking about which VMs have been assigned to which schedule. So if you have a consistent naming convention or tags, you just can do it from your well-known administrative console in REF, or instance or Citrix, uh, and not log in every time to the vProtect. A little more details about the uh, backup provider configuration. Because, well, backup providers can be configured in so many ways. Uh, in this scenario, what you are seeing right now in, the, in, this, in this slide, we have data domain uh, file system, actually. But to be, to be honest, this, represents, this picture represents actually every single uh, um, file, uh, file system that you can use as the backup provider. So vProtect itself doesn't need, for instance, data domain as it's described in here. It can be a completely standalone solution using just plain file system, whatever you have, mounted in the, on the vProtect uh, node. Uh, however, using obviously um, file systems with the duplication uh, actually enables you to save a lot of storage. So you can use, for instance, the same file system, that's another good example, both as the temporary storage space, it means staging on the node, but also it can be your backup target. So you have flexibility as far as the configuration is concerned. The difference is huge because if the file system is the same actually as the staging, vProtect is able to move files or read directly um, to mount uh, later those backups instantly. So if only vProtect is using file system, you will have instant recovery even for single files. You're able to mount them directly without having to copy huge amount of data. Again, if it's the same file system, the backup process is actually also faster. vProtect does backup in two phases. So it exports data, like the, the first arrow that we hear, you see in this picture, and later, the second phase is the store phase, which obviously copies data to the particular, to the other file system. However, if it's the same file system, so there is no need to copy this data, it, the files are just moved to the destination in zero seconds. So it's also boosting your backup process a lot. Uh, in this picture also, we are able to uh, take a look closer at uh, the components behind the scenes. This is, let's say, a single host installation, like vProtect server together with the vProtect node. So there is some engine, this is node, which does the dirty job. There is staging space. This, this is the temporary storage space that you see here. All of the necessary integration APIs is also packaged uh, is, is packed with, uh, together with the vProtect engine. While you can also have the same on the same host vProtect server, which is the database, API layer, and finally the console. Uh, one thing about this API, uh, with version three, we have actually opened our API. So currently you not only have option to integrate um, with vProtect, via command line interface like it was in the past. You're also able to use our API to invoke all of the functionalities, actually have access to all of the functionalities that vProtect offers. 
So if you have, let's say, cloud forms or other third party uh, um, portal that you might want to use to integrate with vProtect, we offer REST API, which basically enables you to do whatever you need to uh, expose just necessary functions through such portals. Um, so depending on what background is that you, that, you are, that, that you are actually, you can use either command line and shell script something or use whatever type of script that you, that, that you like, or you can you invoke our API uh, with REST, REST commands with also the language of your, of your choice. This picture is slightly different and it describes how it typically looks like if we are talking to some enterprise grade uh, backup bundles. Like in this picture, we have IBM Spectrum Protect TSM server. Um, so behind the scenes actually can be either Dell EMC networker or it can also be Veritas Net Backup. We support all three of them and you are able just to grab the data, put it in a temporary storage space. This is the first step. It's exactly the same regardless of the, of the um, backup destination that you're using. However, later data is being transferred to the, to the destination server. And vProtect itself can be installed together with such servers, uh, like we have implementations, uh, um, single box implementations together with IBM Spectrum Protect uh, or with other, uh, with other enterprise grade vendors. Or you can use a remote, uh, a remote uh, site uh, to, um, where we are going to store your data. So obviously that is always the choice of where are you going to invoke the duplication process. Are you going to the duplicate data on client? In this case, it's vProtect. Or are you going to use the duplication in the Spectrum Protect server, for instance? And last scenario, uh, S3 and Swift. Uh, to be honest, most of, of the uh, queries that we are receiving from our customers are S3 uh, related. So it's not always Amazon. It's sometimes some sort of the storage that exposes S3 endpoints. However, the overall process can be done, let's say, that we are able to backup either to local S3-based um, backup provider or just to the cloud. Uh, we have, uh, I guess, um, one of our implementations actually is a, a very good example of such strategy because you are able to point vProtect server to keep last backup locally on the drives while pushing the uh, backups in general uh, to the S3. So this is sort of cloud as a storage in this case being used and we protect uh, as a standalone solution uh, in this particular example, protecting Citrix servers. <coughs> we have always built we protect um, with simplicity in mind. So we wanted to make a simple, easy to use solution so you don't have to worry about how should we do something in another tool uh, to protect my environment, but rather it should be quite intuitive. So those three steps describe how you should perceive vProtect itself. First, you need to just to connect to your environment, and this is typically being done once because you have to add your hypervisors, add your preferred backup destinations, so just give credentials, and index VMs to, or, have, or also hypervisors if you have more complex environment, so that everything is being added to, to the local inventory in vProtect. Um, the second step, well, typically is, well, it, you can obviously test backup restores manually, but what you actually want to do is to create schedules and groups. So you decide at this point which VMs are more important, which are less important, and finally, group them, schedule according to your needs. And if it's necessary, you can restore or mount your, your file system, uh, your, your, your uh, VMs on, the, on your nodes. So to summarize, this is just the UI that, that I'm going to also to show you. Uh, the only thing that you actually may, act, uh, may be interested in in this picture that is currently being shown is that you can see here a task console that is in the vProtect UI. And you can see that you have 
tasks being assigned to multiple nodes, uh, exporting or storing data with multiple um, well, backup destinations or hypervisors. So everything being, is being controlled via API while actually nodes are doing the dirty job. And obviously we are uh, focused also, also uh, on compatibility. So we always want to certify our product with the uh, vendors and stay up to date with the, with, the, uh, with the vendors of the particular virtualization technology. Uh, now I guess it's a good moment for, for some uh, questions. Uh, and I will in the meantime start the, the demo. Uh, remember that you need to first unmute yourself because by default uh, everyone is muted. Okay, so if there are no, no questions at this moment, so I guess we can proceed with the demo part. Okay, I, I guess everyone is able to, to see right now the uh, desktop with the vProtect uh, Protect UI. So, the, in general, this environment actually is connected to several backup providers and several, um, se several hypervisor platforms. So, the good thing about vProtect itself is that you have a single pane of glass covering multiple technologies behind the scenes. So you don't have to worry about uh, installing multiple um, backup solutions to protect those infrastructures separately, but you are actually able to add all of those hypervisors or um, hypervisor managers, if you have some, something like a Red Hat based or Oracle based um, manager, and, so that you, and you are able to protect them um, in the same way um, using vProtect itself. So dashboard obviously is the, the first view that you, are, uh, that you actually see uh, just after logging. It gives you the general idea of how many VMs are protected. Well, maybe some of them are not protected according to your, to your um, schedule settings. And um, some of them obviously they don't have schedule at all. Maybe you just don't want to even think about protection of those. Uh, there are some obviously some last backups information information about size statistics so how much data has been backed up during a parti in particular particular day um, recently and in this particular environment we have two nodes being connected so you can imagine that you can have either two data centers or this is in the same data center but you have installed multiple nodes for scalability or for other uh, purposes. Um, the good thing about nodes is actually that you can have either common configuration, like you can see here. So the, the node configuration basically represents a set of configuration that you want to assign to your node, and you can simultaneously change the parameters to all of the uh, nodes just by changing the node configuration. Node configuration represents the settings, obviously, for the staging, uh, for some optimization mechanisms like the task numbers, uh, settings for the hypervisor platforms, so we can enable compression. If you have multiple data centers, you can add mapping, which data center in your ref actually uses which export domain. Uh, you can enable, um, obviously, some Proxmox settings, and so on and so on. So everything related to the vProtect, uh, how vProtect is backing up your virtualization platform is being configured in here. Node configuration also is the place where we are able to, to, say, to configure vProtect so that it uses only specific backup destinations. So depending on your setup, you can have two nodes backing up to the same backup destination. But in the other, for instance, data center, you have additional node, which basically doesn't have access to your local IBM Spectrum Protect instance. That is why you are able to exclude in the other node configuration this particular um, backup provider. 
So the first step in general using Vprotect is to configure the hypervisors themselves. So if you have ref manager, you are also able to just point to the ref manager and finally scan not only um, not only the uh, virtual machines, but also the hypervisors, so you don't have to add them manually. Mm, finally, okay, so, so let's, maybe, let's maybe index something. If you have your hypervisor manager, once you provide the uh, necessary data, like URL, username, password, in this case, we can choose between ref or oracle, you're able to index the virtual machines running in this particular environment. So this invokes a new task. Uh, as you can see, the index task, well, this one is very quick because basically it's only looking for the hypervisors and virtual machines and is able to, um, and is able to uh, scan also for, for the hypervisors if, if it's a hypervisor manager. The second step, once you have all of the VMs and hypervisors already in place, is that you're able to, um, well, obviously, backup, restore, and mount. Those three, three operations that, that are um, essential for, for vProtect itself. So maybe let's invoke some backup. You choose, well, the backup type, where it should be placed, and the priority itself. Priority. Well, essentially, it's not really important if you, are, uh, if you have empty queue for tasks, but you can imagine that you can have hundreds of VMs being backed up currently. So the priority is always the number that actually um, tells vProtect which VMs have to be, ex which backups have to be executed sooner or later. You can assign the priority to your groups, and in this particular case, it means that you are able um, to not only um, uh, not only decide which VMs are more important than the others, but um, um, but also um, force your backup to be executed before the others. Um, I have executed a task. Hold on a second. Maybe let's execute other backup in the meantime. So the backup process itself consists of several phases. And the export type that you can see actually in here, it's the task that is doing the snapshot of the, of the VM and finally exporting the data. The export process can be different, obviously, depending on what type um, uh, what, uh, what type of, hub, of hypervisors do you have? Nevertheless, the, in general, it is either pool, like pulling data from the Citrix or KVM standalone servers, or it's push way, like it's in Oracle VM, rev-based uh, rev -based, um, um, rev -based hypervisor managers or Oracle VM managers. So that the uh, well that depends always on the API that you that you that, that you are using and then the platform that you are using. Uh, it looks like for some reason the backup process has not started yet. Let me check. Let's stop this one and start again. And in the meantime, actually, we can verify if it has enough storage space um, available. Ah, actually, I see what's the problem. Well, the problem is that the uh, used storage space is less than the required. So this is another thing that actually vProtect supports. You are able to, um, if you have staging space being heavily used by multiple backups being executed at the same time, 
uh, you're able to set up a threshold in vProtect uh, when, let's say, if you have less than 10% free space available, then vProtect will wait until some other operations are free up space um, so that to, they don't actually fail because um, because uh, you don't have enough space for export tasks. Uh, nevertheless, we actually should free up some space. Uh, I should be able to have some. Now it's better. So. Um, <laughs> at this point, I actually one thing also um, that is good at vProtect to notice is that vProtect itself doesn't have the configuration stored in a way on the vProtect nodes. They are stateless, so we are able to backup just central backup central database that is in the vProtect um, server, and you're done. So if you lose everything uh, by both nodes and the server, you are able to actually restore the database and uh, fresh installation will be able to, um, to, to work again without, without any issues. Uh, we, so, okay, so we have a Zen server running, so the demo VM. This is the VM that actually we are um, backing up right now. Well, it was quicker than, than I thought because the snapshot has disappeared. Um, you have to remember that obviously incremental backups for Citrix platforms, they require um, snapshot to be persistent on the, on the hypervisor. So you need to, uh, to be aware that your storage probably should be rather thin provisioned. Um, or support fin provisioning so that your snapshots they don't occupy significant amount of space. Uh, and what is actually good in vProtect 3.2, we also support this change block tracking feature. That is actually secondary snapshot that you need to take care of. Well, you, you don't need to, but, but vProtect does, um, which is used for comparing the differences as actually IPI um, Citrix API um, gives us the information about the blocks that have changed between the between the um, backups. Uh, if you walk around the, and uh, look around the, what, what you have in your um, virtual machine list, it actually provides you several informations about the snapshots that well uh, that are. Um, currently left, for instance, or being used by change block tracking. Uh, it also enables you to exclude particular disks from the backup. So the restore process basically will restore the configuration, will restore um, all of the drives without restoring data for those, those drives that have been excluded. So if obviously it creates an empty file just to mark that there is information about these disks in the uh, in the backup provider. However, later you are going obviously to restore this VM without the data on, in, on those excluded drives. Uh, you're also able to either um, um, set up inherit options. So Citrix has two, uh, two strategies, let's say, two modes for exporting data from the, um, for, for the VMs. <clears throat> the old one that we have uh, that we have been using in the past is the full VM image. It's XVA format, plus separate disks for the incremental, so VHD files. Uh, however, with the recent update with Citrix 7.3, we are having the second option: separate disks, both for full and incremental. With obviously the incremental is being done with the change block tracking support. So this enables you to do such things like excluding backups or mounting them finally also for Citrix, like it was in the past for other platforms. So the restore process basically is also very easy. So we have backed up. This one is quite small VM, so I expect it not to take, take long. So the store operation has just finished. So let's maybe... Um, restore something, this VM, and you can restore either to file system, well, well for 
XVA format, actually, that would be an um, option that you could accept. But I guess if you want to restore a virtual machine, which is with separate drives in raw format with some metadata, you just don't want to bother about uh, how to merge those together, etc. So this is where you actually are able to choose uh, which, uh, which uh, hypervisor you want to restore to. We had actually one customer that was using Biprotect to backup VM on one hypervisor, actually the sixth version, and restore on the hypervisor in version seven. So sort of way of migrating virtual machines between hypervisors. Whenever you do, uh, whatever you're doing, we protect. Actually, all of the tasks have some node being assigned to do the job. That obviously depends on the what. Uh, how do you map your hypervisors to it to the nodes? So whenever you have a hypervisor uh, in your environment, you can have a mixture of the nodes being actually used to protect single infrastructure. Like in Ref, for instance, you're able to have a clusters of hypervisors. And here you can see that there is a node column which indicates which node particular will be responsible to backup VMs on this hypervisor. So currently, uh, whenever you are doing the backup, it may happen that even though you have, let's say, uh, VMs on the same infrastructure, API layer, the central point had decided that, okay, this is VM on the other hypervisor, I'm going to use the completely different node. Those nodes obviously can back up to the single backup destination. So if you, if you have the, let's say, file system, you have to take care of. Especially, actually, file system has the uh, one very important feature, which also you are able to use if you have um, geographically dispersed environments. Uh, you can use, for instance, GlusterFS, which in this case represents a replicated file system. From the vProtect itself, the backup destinations that you define in here, obviously you can assign to your nodes whatever you like. However, you are able to actually mount it the same file system on two nodes, and this file system will replicate automatically data between your two sites. So technically, you're able to physically have vProtect in two sites, having one uh, file system mounted in the same directory on both nodes, and being replicated automatically behind the scenes, so you're able to backup VM in one data center, and restore it just a few minutes later, in the other data center if you have, let's say, a complete breakdown. vProtect, in this case, is, licensed for, is, is being licensed per hypervisors. So the number of hypervisors is the, um, let's say, two socket machines, uh, is the, um, the core aspect of the licensing. And if you have additional, uh, Additionally, some enterprise grade backup provider, there is additional license for the backup destinations of those, um, those three uh, being available. And obviously, if you have this, this license, you are able to, to create a several backup destinations, uh, even pointing to the same, either Spectrum Protect server or, um, or something else. Um, okay, mounted backups. So to file level restore. Um, the good thing about vProtect is that whenever the backup lands in this staging, you're able actually to, um, to, to, we are able to scan for a file system, so you're later able to mount the VM um, on your node. So in this case, I have a CentOS which runs on uh, our OVIR platform. It has several backups stored in multiple, multiple destinations, as you can see. And this has two file systems, and there is actually a single drive in here. So the mount operation can be invoked directly from here, and you are able to specify on which node, which backup, obviously, and specify which file systems, if you, if you want to selectively just access a single file system, um, you would like to mount. If you choose to mount it automatically, uh, there is a single route 
and well, this option works obviously for, for Linux only. You are able to access all of the files within such location later on your vProtect uh, vProtect um, node. And I have here uh, one of the uh, of the backups already been mounted. Let me check that for you. Um, now it has already been probably unmounted. Okay, we can try to do to execute it again here. So mounted backups is the specification where you decide where actually this backup should be mounted, which file systems and so on. So in our case, I have a single root file system, single root file system mounted in this location using the, uh, the following drives. Random access is actually the, the indicator that is able to show you if you want, if your backup provider, well, the file system actually is the only one that can actually present this um, automatically. Uh, if, you, if the backups can be streamed directly from the backup provider. This enables you, uh, not, let's say, you don't have to wait for the backup to be restored, especially if it's a huge VM, um, before the backup is, is mounted on the actual node. Because the vProtect already has necessary files and it has, ah, okay, so that, that was on the AWS, but I have probably removed the files for it. Um, okay, so let me, let me grab another one. This time the backup is going to be restored from the networker itself. And we can actually monitor the progress behind the scenes. So the data is being transferred currently from the networker. It will take a while because the VM it's uh, it's quite big, I guess, for this one. So let, let it restore. And let me, in the meantime, um, summarize a few other things that, that we haven't discussed yet. Since version 3.1, we also support Proxmox uh, hypervisors, uh, both for virtual machines and containers. Since Prox Proxmox actually supports both of them, we are able to use their API to backup the uh, complete image of the virtual machine and later obviously store it uh, somewhere, including the compression option. So if you have the storage without the duplication, then maybe you want to use the option to uh, compress, uh, compress backups before being transferred. Um, so that's, that, that's one thing. Um, in version 3.2, we also support the um, instant notification about failed backups. So you are able not only to receive the daily status of all of your backups within the last 24 hours, but if anything failed, you are able to actually set instant, uh, instant uh, um, notification about the backups that have recently failed. Mm, and a and, and few, more, few more things that we have added in the recent recent release. Uh, well, the, the biggest obviously was the CBT support and mounting backups for the Citrix environments. So that's that's one aspect. The option to freeze file system and on the ref, that's another big news because we have been also asked by our customers to enable that if they have sort of mission critical uh, VMs uh, with some application like databases, or et cetera. Um, and uh, ability to especially to configure the minimum free space for export. So we have also customers that have limited amount of staging space. So they want to have this uh, available, uh, not to fail just because of the staging space uh, being available or not. So that parameter also uh, optimizes and uh, effectively results in higher success rate of your backups. Um, 
And finally, uh, more, uh, so we have added several parameters to, let's say, um, for additional storage configuration. We have also optimized many aspects of our UI. Uh, so just after update process, you are able to, to, not, to see the differences as far as the responsiveness, especially um, that the update process in vProtect is very simple. We provide two RPMs, well, obviously both for installation and updates, and those RPMs are separate for the server and ser separate for the node itself. Everything you need to do is just to use yum command to install the server and node, and the same process applies to the update. Okay, let's check what, okay, so this one failed anyway. Since we have only still just 10 minutes left, uh, I pro actually propose to start the Q&A session for now. So um, please unmute if you, if you have any questions and uh, we can proceed with the, with the Q&A session right now. Uh, currently, actually, I see what functionality is available for Proxmox. So let me answer that for you. Currently, we support full image backup. So the snapshot plus the uh, complete image of the Proxmox virtual machine. And obviously we can store it anywhere. So it can be the file system, it can be enterprise uh, backup provider. So currently also we don't support uh, incrementals and there is no option also to exclude some drives. Um, so let's say this is the, the uh, basic functionality for Proxmox right now. Why is your demo running in a Windows machine? Well, um, actually, it doesn't really matter. Uh, demo is on on the on actually on one of the on the Windows machines, but it has only browser. So using this browser, we are able to access obviously all of the our consoles. Uh, yes, Citrix. Okay, I remember. Citrix is actually the only reason because Citrix provides Zen server, um, Zen Center console, which runs on your Windows. Uh, so that was actually the only reason that we have been using uh, that they that have been using. I'm accessing vProtect from my um, Mac OS because it's browser based, or SSH if I need to use command line. So it's. Uh, from the vProtect perspective, it doesn't matter. The only requirement for vProtect is actually to use Linux. Uh, and uh, by default, we support CentOS or Red Hat based distributions. Uh, for other distribution, di distributions, we need to have additional, uh, additional, let's say, work. But in general, all of our uh, vanilla implementations are based on CentOS. Uh, any other questions? Can we use Fedora? Uh, I think yes. Uh, well, typically I, I would expect rather to use CentOS because if it's server environment, uh, then most preferable is, is to use CentOS, but I guess Fedora should work also. What plan for of Proxmox with incremental and exclude? Is it in roadmap full image we can make over PVA by design? Uh, yes, full image is by design because um, Proxmox actually enables the default mechanism for backing up uh, VMs. Uh, well, however, Proxmox doesn't integrate with other uh, other um, vendors such as enterprise grade IBM, Dell EMC, etc., or S3. So the, the, in Proxmox, there is a built-in mechanism, but it's limited. And that, that is, what, let's say, the official way of backing up, uh, backing up um, uh, VMs. As far as the incremental is, uh, support is concerned, uh, in general, if only Proxmox, Proxmox is going to support such, such, uh, such way of backing up VMs, we are obviously willing to, to include that uh, in vProtect itself. So the limitations, current limitations of the uh, of what features are available or are not available in vProtect 
are actually the limitations of the APIs provided by the uh, hypervisor vendors. So the reason why there is no CBT for, uh, for, uh, for instance, Red Hat is just because there is no CBT currently being offered by the Red Hat itself. And we know that they intend, for instance, to enable that support pretty soon. I hope, well, it was supposed to be half a year ago, but uh, let's assume that it will be uh, just the beginning of the, uh, of, of the 2018. We will automatically uh, do uh, implement this particular functionality in our solution. So vProtect evolves the same as the actual platforms evolve in more like Red Hat or Citrix. Citrix has recently re enabled CBT, so did we. Um, if I decide to install vProtect on Fedora, will you, will you support this type of configuration? Um, we would have to check that. Uh, first, um, I don't see any reason. If it works, I guess there is no reason why we shouldn't. Well, obviously, um, the the main um, well, I would still suggest to use CentOS in that particular in that particular environment because the differences are pretty minor, and we know for sure that CentOS provides everything that we need. Uh, however, I guess CentOS and Fedora should be, let's say, close enough um, for us also to enable support for such distributions. Anyway, we would need to, to verify that in more details, as far, especially as far as the uh, well, Java, base, Java version is concerned and uh, the options to mount backups. Any plan to support other cloud providers like Backblaze? Uh, well, we haven't been actually asked for Backblaze so far, uh, but if um, we always want to, let's say, to, to uh, be close to our customers as possible. So if our customers say, okay, I have the case, uh, I need, let's say, we protect to protect my ref environment, but I have bad blaze and I can't use it. Will you do that for me? Well, so it depends. <laughs> That's the, the, the correct answer, I guess. But uh, everything that we have done so far in we protect was the result of such discussions with our customers. So if they are willing to to let's say have backup to use, let's say in the past it was as free actually. Uh, we have received several queries about the about the S3 support. We have added then uh, S3 support in one of our releases. So uh, we would have to obviously to do some R&D, how to use Backblaze, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But eventually, if you have let's say a project that well you are you you want to use Backblaze, then just let us know. That's the the, the I guess the best answer I can give you right now. In general, actually, I can say that if you have features that you actually see that there is, the, well, you lack some features or you lack support for something or um, actually whatever, uh, and you can just tell us about it. We are really um, keen on um, cooperating and developing our application so that it matches business needs of our customers. So we don't want to implement features that we have invented just, let's say, out of curiosity. Uh, we rather want to have uh, them been built and implemented in production because there is a reason to do so. Is S3 the only public cloud supported? Um, well, I would say Maybe not all, not only, because we have been testing actually uh, as uh, Swift support with the object storage uh, provided by uh, one of our providers here in Poland. Uh, so that was Swift based and they exposed publicly Swift APIs. Uh, but if this cloud supports uh, S3 protocol, or you are able actually to mount it locally, because uh, if you think about it, 
any cloud actually every every cloud the storage cloud that currently i can think of have some sort of client being installed on on your let's say linux distribution and you can see all of your files uh, sort of yeah, as the file system so let's say that is a, it is a workaround for such situations but if only you're able to expose it over s3 or a file system or maybe swift but that is typically less common uh, then yes then you are able to back up to this particular cloud so you can you are free to experiment in in this area because file system i was surprised how many well file system and, and s3 i was surprised how many options it gives to you uh, just to to enable those two connectors and one more thing if you have let's say tsm uh, I remember that TSM itself also supports some uh, sort of the um, cloud storage. Um, so you're able to back up to the TSM, but set up TSM in that way that you're able to store your data in the cloud anyway. Okay, any more questions? I haven't actually, uh, one question actually I can answer by myself. Um, um, there was a question about the requirements for the VProtect installation. So um, that the obvious answer is the, it depends. Um, especially that you can have, let's say, uh, high requirements if you are deduplicating data. So the vProtect has to do the deduplication, for instance, when it's doing client-side deduplication in TSM, for instance. But uh, there are setups quite, uh, I would say, uh, quite um, huge as far as the scalability is concerned. Um, with, let's say, hundreds of hypervisors, several nodes, and the node itself, it's, if it's using um, export domain in the rep, for instance, and this export domain is actually the same storage being exposed by some third party uh, option, like data domain, for instance, that we have been actually shown in our presentation. You can imagine that vProject only has to do, is, is just invoke the APIs on the ref manager, Ref Manager is responsible for pushing data to the storage, which actually is not on the same box as the vProtect. And the overall requirements are very, very low, like, I don't know, four gigs of RAM, maybe two vCPUs, even less, because in the such configuration, you would be able to set up both node and server. And that means that you are still able to back up hundreds of VMs. So the only requirement would be actually to have appropriate bandwidth on your network and appropriate uh, storage space for staging or storage space for backup and efficiently storage. Critical is the storage efficiency for the staging because it's actually, um, it's this component is heavily being used during the backup, simultaneous backup of multi by multiple threads on the vProtect and later simultaneous store operations that are happening at the same time on the same storage. So that is one of the requirements I would say that can be, the, the thing that can be demanding. But if you have already that, it can, well, the staging doesn't have to be local, then the overall CPU and RAM required by Vprotect is not that big. I guess, I guess compared to some other Vendors, we can say that Vprotect is quite small, uh, has, has, has a small footprint, footprint in this case. What is the best available guide or video to follow for someone installing Vprotect for the first time? And actually, I can say we have, uh, we have uh, um, very, very good, um, very, very good uh, installation video, actually, video guide, how to install vProtect uh, and let me paste you the uh, the link itself. Um, it's already on the YouTube. Um, vProtect installation and yeah, this is the first link. Um, I will paste it here in the chat. 
hope everyone is able to, to read the chat right now. It, is, it should be this one. Uh, it should have been also uh, shared, uh, I guess, with the emails, but if not, then you're able to actually access it and walk through all of the uh, all of the required steps to set up both server and nodes and set up your storage, uh, set up your storage um, for the Vprotect itself. Uh, so if you would like to test Vprotect uh, by yourself, just let us know. We'll provide you a trial license, we'll provide you access to the packages and obviously the materials. Uh, this video is, I guess, uh, one of the, uh, of the best options to, to see how it works, even without installation. Um, however, you're able to also to walk through the documentation and see the installation process by yourself. It's not that complex because it basically everything that we need is already packaged in the RPM files and you just need to install two RPM files. So that actually the harder part would be to configure your, um, your infrastructure. So storage especially. So you would have to install OS, you have to attach some additional storage space, you would have also to uh, enable connectivity with your either back enterprise backup vendors, uh, when enter enterprise backup solutions or expose some uh, credentials to uh, S3 and Amazon S3 or uh, file system. The good about the, the the good thing about this video is that it covers uh, many aspects in a single in in a single uh, piece of, of of the guide. So we are able to walk through not only through the simple basic installation, but also see how it uh, is being achieved, uh, mm -hmm. even using some some more advanced setups especially that just to try the vprotect i would suggest to use a simple local installation of a node so single node installation and i think i'm not sure but this guide should also include the uh, multiple node installation so if you have the uh, nodes that are actually remote to the server then you then there is a process of the uh, generating the necessary uh, certificates and assigning them on the nodes. Okay, I think that uh, that covered all of the questions that we have uh, for today's session. If you have uh, anything more that you would like to know, uh, just uh, write to us. So there is vprotect at storeware.eu. Uh, so we are responsible for the, let's say, technical aspects. And there is also uh, sales at vprotect, uh, sales at storeware.eu if you have more uh, sales related questions. Uh, so not only about, let's say, purchasing, but also about the partnerships, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you for today's session. And I guess that's everything I have for today. And let us know if you need anything from our site.